Hi everyone, this is Anna Meyer again with some more World Machine and this time we're going to look at extents, the area that you're actually going to render and then we're going to look at exports next time. In World Machine you can work all over the place. Here in the layout generator you can have, you have this infinite plane that you can work on but what you actually can render is what's within this white square, the extent. And extents can be virtually any size and they have a resolution and a placement. And now we're going to look at how you set up the area that you're going to actually render. Extents can be placed here in the layout generator if you press this little boxy thing here that doesn't have a name, but this little box button in the center then you see you get the, the selected extents if you have more. This is a simple file, so we only have one, the main extents. And you can, now you see you get the, the, the pointy arrows here, so you can actually drag the, uh, the extents around. And you can also grab the corners, and then you can make it larger and smaller. And that way you can set the area you're interested in and saying this is the area we might do it a little bit bigger here so we get all the the nuances of the ocean depth here as well so let's say this is the the extents now we have set the area that we want to render and then we go in and do all the details in the world extents and resolutions that is actually titled project settings So in the project settings, there are three tabs. One is the way you manage your extents and their resolutions. And you have the tiled build options. That is a chapter by itself. And currently, tiles don't really work. So we're going to skip that one. The general uh, setup I talked about in an earlier video. So this time, we're going to concentrate on this tab here. Here you can create extents, you can rename them, you can delete them, and you can also set the location and size and resolution of each extent. This is a simple project, so we only have the main extent, we only have one. And if you look at location, I showed you earlier that you can set it in the layout view, but here you can go in and actually set the coordinates exactly. So you can set it for the lower left coordinate or the up and the upper right coordinate, but you can also use size. And these work together, so to speak. So if you change the size, these will, will change accordingly. And you can also lock an extent, which is very, very handy once you have established this is the area and you start exporting content. Because then you want the, the texture to match the elevation, etc. So all the content should, all the exports should match each other perfectly. And that's what you get when you use the locked. But one exception is that if you build it multiple times, certain content will not match exactly. But that's something for the more advanced videos. And the other one is allow non-square extents. That's the something that can cause problems because a lot of applications demand that you have a square area. They not take non-square ones. So, so I usually don't allow non-square extents because then I don't run into trouble later. Some of these trouble you can fix in Photoshop and stuff too. So it's normally you're not too much of trouble. But for simplicity, I'm working with, with square extents only. Then you have the build resolution and it's simply set in meters per pixel. And here currently we are almost 22 meters per pixel. And this is setting, this extent is now set to uh, 1024 by 120, 1024. That's usually 1K. And then you can increase it to 2Ks, 4Ks, 8Ks, and 16Ks. Or you can go down to half a K, 512 by 512 pixels. And then you can have that to 255, 56 pixels, etc. And there is also a plus one pixel because there are applications that 
need an extra pixel for some reason. So you, if you know that you you want use it, uh, something that needs that you want a, an extra pixel to to import it when you import it, then make sure to check that. So I'm going to work with. 1k for now when I'm showing this video but then I will render it at 4k to show you for the next video so let's do 1k here so now we've set it up and there's one more thing and that's the conserve memory when you're working resolutions this low it doesn't matter but once you see if I crank up the resolution here to 4k and 8k now I need a machine if I don't have resolution I need 44 gigabytes of RAM and if I do 60, 16K, I need hundred basically 178 gigabytes of, of RAM. But if I conserve memory, I can go down and only use 50 gigabytes of RAM and still do a 16K resolution. The re the, what happens is that if you go over your physical RAM in your computer, then World Machine needs to start swapping. And that takes an enormous long time, depending on how, if you have SSDs set up in a RAID configuration or something, you might have no problem with it. But even on my machine here, I have a problem when I go over it, it takes way longer. It usually works, but it takes way longer. But exactly what conserve memory do, I'm not 100% sure, but what I think it does is that it, it generates a whole bunch of different height maps for, for my main projection files that I use in my projects, you can have seven or eight hundred different ones. Each device basically create a new version of the train that is some then filtered or added to or divided and and and, and subtracted from etc. And what when you do when you conserve memory you don't redo them or you can switch them in and out of memory. So it has something to do with that. But I haven't noticed any negative effects of using conserved memory. So for me it seems to work fine. So this is the setup. So once we have set up and we don't want to have 16K, so I go down to, to 1K for now. Now we have our extent ready and set up for to create the outputs. So that's the next video. Then we will look at how we set up the output so we get the right data once we do the render.